Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy, the young Filipino, coming at you with another video. And as you can tell by the title of this video, we have an unboxing. Let's get straight into it. We are going to unbox this product. We're gonna open it up, show you guys what it is, show you all the components, let you know what it does, and then we'll go into the kitchen and we'll do a test run with it. Let's go. So this is the company Meet Your Maker. We do have a meat processing device. It is a meat grinder. This is a 500 watt meat grinder, sausage stuffer. Let's get into it. Let's go. A box inside of a box. Now let's open this box. So the whole reason why I got a meat grinder is because for work, I meal prep all of my lunches and buying ground beef at the grocery store is getting real expensive. And I've already experimented with grinding my own meat with a uh, stand mixer with a meat grinder attachment. And if I'm gonna be doing a lot more of my own ground beef, I might as well invest in a product that grinds meat. So let's go take this out. Looks like we have, whoa. Looks like we have the, the plunger, the pusher for the meat. We have some sausage stuffing pieces. We have the plastic O-ring that goes for the sausage stuffing equipment. And honestly, I'm not even gonna be doing any sausage stuffing. Sausage stuffing? But if that's some stuff you guys wanna see, I can always make some content for that. I can always make some sausages. Personally, I'm just not a big sausage guy, but I do like bratwurst. I do like sausages. It's just not something that I personally wanna put the time and effort into doing. But if that's something that you guys wanna see the young Filipino do, you already know we will get down and make sausages. So here we have some attachments. These are the metal dowels, I guess you would call them. Coarse, and I think this is for the sausage stuffing. So we got some dowels there. And we'll get into, this is another piece here. We'll have to check out what that goes to. Oh, that must, I think that might go right in here everything is stored inside of the stuffer or excuse me inside of the stomper so this is the grinding device this is going to have the motor and this is what are all the attachments are going to go to we have a reverse and off and a stuff and then a grind I don't know if you guys can see that there. We have the, what is this? The plug stored in the bottom. Makes it pretty convenient. Not all that heavy, honestly. It's pretty, it's pretty heavy duty, but not like super heavy. Let's take this out. So we have the instruction manual here. Pretty simple thing to, uh, to work with, but definitely good to double check and read over just in case you make any mistake. Here is the actual device that the meat will go into and there is a few things inside of here that creates the grinding procedure. We have a, uh, what is this one? This is a 12, this is a 4.5 millimeter. Then we have the actual blade for the grinder here. And then we have the a propeller or I don't know what you call this thing but that goes in there there's a little notch here which there's also a notch on here if it will focus so you put the blade on and then you make sure it's all squared up and you line up that notch and it should not go anywhere 
we have here the plate that you can put all your meat on and then start shoving it over into the hole so it goes down into the grinder and that's all we have we have the grinder here we have this piece we will set inside it doesn't move at all there's only one way to put it in on this back side here a locking piece here that you want to just put you know hand tight you don't want to over screw that and now we're in there like swimwear and that ain't going nowhere this right here will tell you what everything is and what it's called this is called the head we just screwed the head onto the head attachment hub we use the head locking knob to make sure that this wasn't going anywhere and it's locked in place. The auger, this is called an auger, ha ha ha. We're gonna put the auger in place inside of the head and we're gonna make sure that it's in there properly. That's a hectagon. And we're gonna make sure that it's in there securely and properly. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna assemble the blade. The blade only goes in one way which the flat side is going to be facing out. This curved side will be facing in. And we'll put that in place. So we put that auger in. The auger can only go in in one way. You make sure it's attached in there properly. You put that blade in there. And from there you're going to want to choose what attachment you're going to use. This is a 10 millimeter grinding plate. And like I said, it has that notch at the bottom and there's a notch down here, and you're gonna wanna line those up so that it doesn't move around on you. This is called the front ring nut. So you wanna back thread that front ring nut until you're lined up properly, and then screw it all the way on, and that is properly put together now. Now our next piece that we're gonna put on is the tray. This is the tray here, and it simply just, slides right in and what you can do with this you can line up all your meat here and then just start feeding it into this hole to where it will then go into the auger the auger will push the meat through the head it'll start going through the grinding plate and that's how you get your ground meat we also have this is the stuffing plate if you want if you're ever going to want to make any type of sausage you're going to want to use this stuffing plate along with your different size stuffing funnel so this is a this is a flange for stuffing so you're gonna want to take all this stuff off take the grinding blade out and you're gonna want to put the flange on you're gonna want to put whatever size stuffer you're gonna use you know large medium and tiny put that in there and there's these little notches on the ring of it and there's notches on the flange to where these are gonna line up properly and it won't move. So you would just put that in instead, put that ring nut back on, and then put your casing on the outside of it and just run it and let it all go through. Probably won't be making any sausage, but we have it if we ever wanna do it in the future. This is the stomper. So when you start pushing your meat from here into the hole, you're gonna wanna use this stomper to feed it further down into the auger so it'll start grinding the meat so yeah this is our meet your maker 500 watt meat grinder i have a 14 and a half pound brisket chilling we are going to start processing that and i'm going to take you guys along but first things first i'm going to wash all these components i'm going to hand wash them and then i'm going to throw them into the freezer now the reason why you want to throw the now the reason why you want to throw that into the freezer is because you're going to want to keep your meat as cold as possible. The colder the meat is, the better the grind will become. And once that fat starts to warm up, it'll be a lot harder for it to push through the auger and push through the grinding plate. So I'm going to wash all these components. I'm going to throw them in the freezer. And while that's in the freezer, I'm going to start cutting up the brisket. And I'm going to put that into the freezer as well for, you know, half hour to an hour. And then I'll take it all out and we're going to start grinding. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how the grind looks. And then I'm also going to cook up a burger for you guys and give you a quick taste test. 
I'll see you guys in the kitchen after this is washed up and we're processing some of that brisket. Let's go. All right, so we're back. We're about to start processing this meat. So let me pull out the brisket. One second. So boom, this is what we're working with. We have a 14 and a half pound brisket. I'm gonna process just about probably 80% of it. I'm gonna cut off, as you'll see, I'm gonna cut off this deckel piece. There's not much we can do with this, but I will save it and render it out later. Um, and we're gonna keep pretty much all this fat cap on. And I'll show you. What's up? All right, so the way I'm gonna process this brisket, I'm gonna slice it down the middle, I'll deal with the flat, cut it into cubes, and then I'll deal with the point, and I'm gonna cut that into cubes. I'm gonna take off this deckel real quick. So we do not need to mess with this bad boy. So come in, just take some off. So we're not even gonna use any of this. So we'll just leave it to the side for now. I'm gonna trim up some more of this fat because this uh, brisket is already really fatty as it is. I really don't need excess amount of fat because it's already come out, it's already gonna come out really juicy and fat, fatty as it is. So we'll just clean up some of that deckle. No big deal. Let's see here. I'm gonna whack off some of this fat. Like I said, this is a super fatty cut. So, if you wanna take some of the fat off, be my guest. This is the way I like my ground beef. So I'm gonna take some of this fat off. And I'm gonna keep this fat, and what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna render it out and make my own beef tallow. That's what I like to cook a lot of my food in instead of using seed oils. I will try to use as much beef fat as possible in the form of tallow. So we'll cut all this out. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna save it, but we're not gonna use it for this particular grind. Seems about good enough. Honestly, oop, this fat cap is definitely just enough fat as is. So let's take this guy down in half. And we will deal with the point in a minute. We'll just take this flat section. So I'm just gonna cut it into chunks, little strips, and these strips will become cubes. That's all the flat, and now we'll move over to the point. I think I'm gonna work with this in sections, so I'm gonna try and take this muscle off of this piece here. So it's still some of the flat, just to make it a little bit easier, but it might not go as easy as we think. So I'm gonna take more of this fat off. Like I said, we'll render this fat out later, make our own tallow.
Ah, uh, you son of a bitch. Uh. Alright, so here I have all of the meat processed uh, into the pieces that I want. I'm going to throw this into the freezer right now so it'll firm up and harden a little bit. This is all the fat that I have here. I'm going to vacuum seal this and put this in the freezer until I'm ready to make beef tallow. If you guys want a video on how to render your own fat to make your own beef tallow, leave a comment down below and we'll put a video together on how to make your own beef tallow. I'll see you guys as soon as this gets a little firm. Let's go. All right, we've got our meat here. It's been chilling in the freezer. We got the grinder here, nice and frozen. I'm gonna transfer this meat onto my cutting board because I'm gonna use this container to catch all of the ground meat. So, let's do this. All right, so we're gonna turn her on and we are going to start grinding. Let's do it.
And there you have it. Get this guy out of the way. This is our coarse ground ground beef. And some people like to grind it on the smaller setting. Now, I've done that before on a different grinder, on a KitchenAid with a grinder attachment. And what I found out is when you grind this even finer, your ground beef pretty much just crumbles. And I wanna leave this stuff as coarse as it'll be because I want nice big pieces and chunks of my ground beef. So I'm gonna kinda mix this around so all the fat incorporates. And then I'm gonna bring you guys to the stove so we can make a burger. Let's go. Here we go. We have oh, we have our very juicy brisket ground beef patty. Let's do a quick taste test. I did this to probably let's see. Oh yeah, a little pink in the middle, so a good you know mid rare. It is falling apart a little bit because I didn't compact it that much, but mm, nothing like. A brisket hamburger. Let's go. So there you have it. This is the this is the Meet Your Maker 500 watt meat grinder. We ground probably about 13 and a half ish pounds of brisket. Did it with no problem. Made a patty. And there you are. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to be part of the gang, always hit that subscribe button. You already know the deal. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite part of this. Let me know if you guys grind your own meat, if you guys are um, any type of wild game hunters and you guys like to make your own sausages, ground, ground meat, whatever you guys like to do, leave a comment down below. As always, this is the Young Filipino coming at you with another video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. All right, so we're back at it. It's been a week since I made my first part of this video. I have all the ground beef here that has been processed, ground up. It's in a, it's in a coarse ground state right now. And after a week of my meal preps and eating the, the ground beef this coarse, I figure I am going to actually grind it into the smaller setting. So I have it here. I have the smaller grind on it right now. And I'm going to, this, these have been thawed out. They're still a little bit on the frozen side, but it'll be all right for the grind. We want this to be as cold as possible. All the components have been sitting in the freezer. So we're gonna re-grind all of this right now into the smaller grind setting. Stay tuned.
and this is six pounds right here they're all one pound packaging and there's six of them so i'm going to be doing six pounds of this this is um brisket ground brisket coarsely ground and i'm going to grind it up a little bit smaller All right, I have two more pounds to do really quick. And the reasoning behind me wanting to not have this course of a grind and have a smaller grind, when I did make my burger patties with them, they were pretty tough, they were hard to chew, the fat didn't render out the right way. Like I said, this is a brisket cut, so the meat is going to be inevitably more, more uh, tough and will take more time for the muscle fibers to break down and also the fat to render out. So, I did take three pounds the other day and regrind it on the on the finer blade, and I made a couple burgers out of it, and they were just they were great. Fat melted, they were super juicy, just the way I liked them. When I had my previous meal prep, I was not a big fan of the texture and the flavor of how the burgers came out, and so this is my whole reason why I'm going to go and actually 
regrind it on the smaller setting. So let me get back, let me get done with these last two pounds and I'll show you the final product. All right, so there you have it. This is just about six pounds of ground up brisket. Like I said, the first grind, it was on the more coarse setting or the more coarse um, cutting blade or whatever you want to call it. I can't even think right now. And now this is on the more fine. There we go. This is on the more fine grind which this is actually going to create better burgers better ground beef that coarse texture was just a little bit too thick this is going to be what you want let's go all right so that is the video this is the meet your maker meat grinder the 500 watt meat grinder if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, be a part of the gang, leave a comment down below, let me know if you guys ever grind your own meat, let me know if you mess with ground beef, if you meal prep, that's what this is all about, this is all about my meal prep, and buying ground beef at a reasonable, affordable way, getting a brisket, grinding it yourself, and just being able to sustain a lifestyle of eating a more animal-based diet, and it helps with my day-to-day -day eating habits, work life, and home life. Let's go. I'll see you guys in the next video.